Yeah, not too bad. <laughs> You're my first contact on my homemade transceiver. Oh, that's pretty cool. You could probably, if there's noise in the background, uh, I've got um, a, I've got a really noisy fan on the PA block. So, so <laughs> if you can hear that, uh, I'm only running about two and a half watts as well. So hopefully you can hear me okay and it doesn't sound too terrible. Hi guys and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So here we are on part three of my home built SDR transceiver, which is based on a Langstone V3 running on a Pi 5. Now, if you've not seen part one and part two, then I would suggest you check them out as they provide information on how we got to this stage. So in this video, I actually make my first FM and SSB contact using this setup. And while all of this looks a little bit of a wiry mess, I will try to explain what each part does. There are some new parts here that I did not cover in previous two episodes of this build series, but I will cover those shortly. And what I've already covered is the control panel on the bottom left here, which at the moment is in prototype fashion. This consists of a push rotary control, two push buttons, and a little microcontroller, which emulates a USB mouse. Now using these controls allows me to change frequency and change any parameters in the menu. The screen is an official Raspberry Pi 7 inch touchscreen with a Pi 5 strapped to the back. In the middle, we have an extension speaker which is connected to the speaker output of that all scan UCI 120 communications interface. Now, this is essentially our sound card for getting audio in and out of the Pi 5. Now, on the top right, we can see the Pluto Plus, and this time this is actually an original Pluto Plus and this is plugged into the Pi 5 using USB cables. This is completely controlled from the Langstone V3 software that's running on the Pi 5. Now between the Pluto and the RF amplifier, you can see a small little board. Now this is a homemade low pass filter for two meters, around 145 megahertz. Now this is needed as the transmission from the Pluto Plus is not clean, and we need to clean it up before it goes into the amplifier. Now the amplifier itself, which we'll take a closer look at shortly, is a module which I purchased from Enigma Components here in the UK. The output of the amplifier then goes to a custom RF relay switch, which is controlled via the TX line coming from one of the pins of the Pi 5's GPIO. Now while most things in this build can be purchased, some items need to be custom made. Now a friend of mine, Mike G0MJW, had the Gerber files for this little board up on his website. Now, while the original design required 5 volts for the control line, Mike very kindly altered the circuit so that we can connect the control directly to the TX line of the Pi 5. Now, the board uses an HF353 relay, which is very suitable for RF switching. This board with the relay allows me to connect just one antenna to the output and then have the Pluto's TX and RX ports connected to the other side. Of course, in my example, I'm using an RF amplifier in line with the TX side of the Pluto. Now I got these boards made by JLC PCB and it was super easy to get these made and they only took a week to arrive. Now, if you've never designed boards or sent off for them or ordered them before, let me just quickly show you how easy it is, especially to order from JLC PCB. Now, if you're going to get boards made with JLC PCB supplying and fitting the components for you, then you will need to select this option down the bottom. You'll then also need a BOM file, that's bill of materials, and you'll also need a CPL file, which is a pick and place file. Now that essentially is a file that contains all the positions of each of the components on the board, and that's used by the pick and place machine, just to make sure those components are put in the right place. Now once the BOM and CPL files are processed, you'll be shown a similar screen to this. If JLC PCB did not have any stock of a particular component, then you do have the option to search for an in-stock alternative. Now it might be the same component values, but by a different manufacturer, for example. Now once you're happy with the components list, you can then proceed to place the order, choosing which type of shipping you require and the processing time. About a week later, those boards popped through my letterbox and the only components that I did not have fitted by JLC PCB was the SMA edge sockets and the pins for the 5 volt ground and control lines, but these are cheap enough from places like Amazon or eBay and really easy to fit myself. 
So let's briefly talk about this RF amplifier module. Now I am only going to concentrate on getting VHF working at the moment. So I purchased this RF module, the RA08H1317M, which is rated to output around eight watts with a 20 milliwatt drive. Now the PCB you can see here is made by Enigma Components, and this provides a nice and easy way to integrate the RF module into your project. However, the input of the module on this PCB actually has a 6 dB attenuator in line. And given that the output of the Pluto at 145 MHz is extremely low, I wanted to remove this 6 dB attenuator. So to do so, I use these cool soldering iron tweezers. Now I've never used these before, but they were recently sent to me to try. Now they run off USB, so using something like a power bank is perfect and makes it extremely portable. You can also set the temperature using the buttons and the LCD. Now I'll link below if you fancy getting one of these for yourself. It definitely made removing these SMD components super easy and super quick. Now the resistors I needed to remove from this board was R1, R2, R3, R4, R5 and R6. And then I just had to bridge across R5 and R6. Now this then removes that 6 dB attenuator, meaning there will be more drive from the Pluto reaching the input of the RF module. Now, if you are going to use a module like this, let me tell you about something important that you do need to know. But there's no ground pin on that module. The module takes its ground from the back of the module itself, the part that straps to the heatsink. Now, incidentally, the heatsink is not supplied. You do need to source one of these for yourself, but they're cheap enough to buy. Now, there are three connections on the PCB. One is for 13.8 volts, one is for ground, and then there's a PTT line. So the PTT line activates and puts the amplifier into transmit mode when that PTT line is grounded. However, for my testing, I'll solder a wire between the PTT connection and the ground connection so that it's permanently on. In the final build, this will be controlled via a relay to save power and so that the amplifier is not always on. Before you can use this amplifier, you do need to set the bias voltage Again, this is super easy to do. So before powering on the amplifier, turn the little pot totally anti-clockwise. Then take your multimeter and measure the voltage on the bias pin of the RF module. Turn the pot clockwise very slowly until you reach a voltage of around three volts. According to the specification, the minimum bias is 2.5 volts, the maximum is 3.5 volts, and the optimum is three volts. Now, all modules may vary when it comes to the bias voltage, so always consult the specification sheet before setting it. Now, with everything turned on, I wanted to test the power output, and keying on full power on the Pluto via the Langstone software, I saw just under 3 watts with this current setup. Now, you would have noticed that I set the bias voltage to around 3.5 volts, which is near maximum, and that is only temporary until my little RF driver board arrives. I've ordered a board from Amazon which should amplify the Pluto signal to a level where I can get the full 8 watts from the RF module. Now when the board arrives, I'll most likely drop the bias voltage down to 3 volts as recommended in the specification sheet. So now it's time to test it on air. First I'll test it on FM and then I'll test SSB. Now during the following clips you will also see and hear what my audio sounded like at the receiving station's end. Well, I'll tell you what, that's absolutely interesting about the turnstile antenna. I guess they're designed so that uh, they can just be put up in one uh, one particular uh, location and... Uh, uh, from whatever angles or degree or polarisation... The signal comes from the satellite, um, I, think, um, I think they're designed, aren't they, to try and capture it all. I believe, um, I believe that you can also do the same uh, for... Um, uh, 130, 137 megahertz all around that area for the NOAA satellite. Yeah, to be fair, the audio sounds fine to me. Um, on, on 350, was, uh, you were kind of in with the noise. Um, yeah, there's certain parts of the 2-meter band descent that um, just, yeah, have noise on all the time. But no, it sounds absolutely fine, mate. It sounds quite nice. Um, I've not got any uh, digital noise reduction on or anything like that. Um, I've adjusted the RF gain slightly to get rid of a bit of background noise. Um, but overall, no, it sounds, sounds really good, uh, perfectly usable. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> well, I'm very pleased with that. So, side band is also working okay. All right, well, look, thanks, Greg. Much appreciated. Um, and
all investigation on what well, there we go, guys. One step closer to building my own homemade SDR transceiver. Next will be to set up an RF amplifier for UHF, i.e. the 70 centimeter band, so that it becomes a dual band system. Now, you may be wondering how will I handle the band switching and amplifier switching to the antenna port? Well, I'll be using diplexes. Now, more on that in the next part of the video build series. And if you did find this interesting and want to see more like this, then make sure to be subscribed so that you don't miss any of the future parts. Massive thank you to all my patrons, my YouTube subscribers and members, and of course everybody that watches my videos. It's very much appreciated. I still need to decide on a case to put all of this in once I've finished prototyping everything, but we'll get there eventually. Anyway guys, take care of yourselves, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.